beautiful sisters. Welcome back to Pastor Kim Speaks, where we are elevating all things faith and femininity. So glad that you're here. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that often stirs up controversy and misconceptions. We're talking about sexiness and spirituality. Oh, the great two S's. Can they be in agreement? Can they walk together? Let's shatter these myths together that often come up. I believe that it's time as women of God that we reclaim our God-given right to feel confident, our God-given right to feel beautiful, our God-given right to even feel sexy. Yes, women of God, without compromise, without falling outside of the will of God. Let's talk about these 10 lies about being sexy and safe. First one, being sexy is sinful. Being sexy is a sin. Let's, let's get real, okay? Let's get real, sis. God is the ultimate artist. And we as women are God's masterpieces. Genesis 1:27 says, so God created mankind in God's own image, in the image of God. God created them, male and female. God created them. That includes our bodies, woman. That includes every curve, every dimple, honey, every hip, all of it was created to glorify God. And so when we embrace our sexiness, when we embrace our beauty, when we embrace our allurement, we're actually celebrating God's creative genius. Lie number two, embracing your sexiness means you're not modest. Have you heard that one? That one's popular. Understand this ladies, modesty is not about hiding yourself. It's about your heart attitude. It's about respect. It's about honor. It's not about minimizing or diminishing yourself. It's about celebrating who you are in Christ in a respectful way. First Timothy two talks about women adorning themselves with modesty and self-respect, but understand that ladies understand that that's a mindset, not a fashion statement. There's a difference because I'm sure all of you have experienced ladies who dress classy, covered up, but they're mean. They dress up and they look the part, but on the inside, they're horrible versus somebody who may dress a little bit more revealing and they, are so, they have such a pretty, beautiful spirit. It all comes down to mindset and intention. Yes, if you wanna cover up, cover up and be a nice person. If you're gonna, if you're gonna show some cleavage, be a nice person. Lie number three, it's a sin to be sexy and spiritual. You can't do both. You can't be sexy and spiritual. Honey, this is a big one. This is huge. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, right? Honoring God means taking care of this temple. It means taking care of our minds, our bodies, and our soul. And part of that means feeling good about yourself. Feeling good about yourself is part of taking care of your mind, body, and soul. Feeling good about yourself is part of honoring the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Your body is worthy of celebration because the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. Your body is worthy of being appreciated and respected and adored. Just because you're sexy doesn't mean that you're being sinful or doing something inappropriate. Number four, that leads me to this one. This lie, I'm sure you've heard this one. Being sexy means that you're inviting unwanted attention. You're looking for attention. That's why you're dressing like that. Have you heard that before? I have. Let's flip the script, okay? Our worth, first of all, is not determined by somebody else's gaze, right? Matthew 5 makes it very clear. Matthew 5, 28. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery <laughs> with her in her heart. What does that mean? The problem, honey, I don't care if you walk around in a brown paper bag. I don't care if you walk around in a garbage bag, okay? The problem is not going to be your sexiness, honey. <laughs> it's those impure thoughts that whoever has is the issue. You are not responsible for their behavior. Now, of course, you can make decisions about your body and how you present yourself in line with the Holy Spirit as the Spirit leads you. But at the end of the day, no matter what you wear, you can't control the 
thoughts of others. Lie number five, you can't be a strong Christian woman and also embrace your sexiness. Have you heard that one? If you're going to be a Christian woman of God, if you're going to be saved and sanctified, you can't be sexy at the same time. Oh, Lord. Have you heard of the Proverbs 31 woman? Anybody? Anybody heard of Proverbs 31 woman? She's strong. She's confident. She's full of dignity. And hear me, hear me, saints. Sexiness does not diminish your strength. It complements it. It accentuates it. It magnifies it. You can, both, you can be both powerful and pretty. You can be both fierce and feminine. It's a winning combination. They don't have to be in competition with each other. They don't have to contradict each other. They can support one another. Lie number six, being sexy means you're not respecting yourself. If you're being sexy, it means that you have no morals or respect. Self-respect comes from knowing your identity in Christ. It's not about what you wear or how you look. First Peter three encourages us to adorn ourselves with the inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That's where true confidence comes from, not from external validation. And even with a quiet, gentle, beautiful spirit on the inside, that does not mean that you forget about what's happening on the outside. Am I right about it? Lie number seven, if you're sexy, you're not being a good example to the younger generation. If you're sexy, you are leaving a bad example for the young people, right? Have you heard that? Listen, I agree that we need to be teaching younger women to love themselves. I agree that we need to be teaching the next generation to honor their bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. Titus 2 is a great example of that. Titus 2, 3 through 5 talks about older women teaching younger women to be self-controlled to be pure, right? But let's not get it twisted, women of God. If we are going to be women that helps the next generation, that includes helping them embrace their femininity with confidence and grace. It includes helping younger women not be ashamed of their curves and their body and to celebrate and to acknowledge that this is how I show up and to take up space. We have to teach them how to do that and not make them feel bad or ashamed of how they show up in the world. Line number eight, Pastor Kim, if you're trying to be sexy, that means you're worldly. That means you're more concerned of the things about this world than the things of God. Hear me, we are in the world, but we're not in this thing. And embracing your God-given beauty is not worldly. If you, if, you, if you enjoy feeling good about yourself, you're not a worldly person. It's celebrating the amazing creation that God has made, which is you. Romans 12 encourages us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And when you choose to renew your mind under the power of the Holy Spirit, that is also going to include embracing a healthy body image. It's going to change how you feel about your looks and how you show up and your body and your shape and the clothes that you wear. It's going to change everything. Yeah, it will. Line number nine. If you're saved, Pastor Ken, why do you even care about being sexy anyway? If you're saved, you should not care about being sexy. Okay. God is a God of details. God cares about everything. From the number of hairs on our head to the way we walk, the things we cry about, the things we're happy about. God cares about all the details. First Samuel 16 reminds us that God, yes, looks at the heart, but that doesn't negate the fact that God also cares about the outward appearance. Have you seen creation? Have you seen nature? Have you seen the daisies, the roses, and the lilies? God created beautiful things. God created you beautifully, and God wants you to embrace that beauty. Man, Let's not be, you know how artists, they, artists love when people appreciate their art. God loves it when we appreciate his creation. And that includes us. The last one, lie number 10. I'm going to have to do, let me know if you want me to do like a breakdown of all these, like in a in separate video. Lie number 10, being sexy distracts us from our relationship with God. Understand this. When it comes to our relationship with God, it's holistic. It includes our minds, our bodies, our hearts, the whole thing. It includes everything. Romans 12 verse one encourages us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. That means embracing all of who you are, including your sexiness, get this, as an act of worship. Yes, yes, woman of God, your sexiness, how you show up in the world can be an act of worship. Remember sisters, you're fearfully and wonderfully made.
That's who you are. Embrace all of who you are, including your sexiness, as you walk in faith. You're saved. Where are my saved girls at? You're sexy. Where are my sexy girls at? And you're sanctified. Where are my sanctified girls at? Where are my sanctified girls at? <laughs> now go out there and shine. Shine for the Lord. You deserve it. I want to hear your comments. Let's connect in the, in the, in the comments. Share your thoughts. Share your experiences. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What's, what's coming to the surface for you as you were hearing this? I want to hear in the comments below. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe for more faith-filled content. I believe in you. I can't wait to talk to you again. God bless. Be safe. Be sexy.